Okay, in this video we're going to look at a solution to um, problem A1 from the 2017 Putnam. And so uh, let's look at the problem. So we want to let S be a subset of the natural numbers and, it ha and it's the smallest set such that these three properties hold. So 2 is an element of S. If n squared is an s, then n is also an s. And then if n is an s, then n plus 5 quantity squared is an s. And now what we want to determine is which positive integers are not in s. And before we get started, I want to talk about what does it mean to be the smallest set that satisfies a certain criterion. And what it means is that if another set were to satisfy this criterion, then s would need to be a subset of that other other set. So we'll see that in the very last step of our solution. Okay, so now uh, let's notice first of all that 1 is not an element of S. So that's pretty clear from the setup. And then also um, we can do the following. If n is in S, then that means n plus 5 squared is in S by 3, but then that means n plus 5 is in S by 2. So it'll actually be useful to just use the fact that n is in S to get n plus 5 in, in S um, from time to time. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do is the following little calculation. So we know that 2 is in S, and that tells us that 2 plus 5 squared, which equals 49, is in S. Okay, well that's pretty clear. But now, notice that tells us that 49 plus 5 squared, which is equal to 54 squared, is also an element of S. And now from here what we can do is see that 54 um, squared plus 5 times 44 is equal to 56 squared, which is an element of S. Okay, so it might seem like we went for a loop there, but notice if n is an s, then n plus 5 in s is an s. And in fact, that means that n plus 5k is an s because we can just keep doing it. So that means since 54 squared is an s, then 5 times 44, which happens to be 56 squared, is an s. Okay, now the next thing that we'll do is this. So this tells us that uh, 56 is in S. Good, because 56 squared is. And from there, we can do 56 plus 5 times 13, which is 121, is in S. Okay, but then that's 11 squared, which tells us that 11 is in fact in S. But now we're good to go because if 11 is in S, then 11 plus 5 is in S. So in other words, 11 plus 5, which is equal to 16, is in S. But 16 has a nice property that it's, th that it's uh, 4 squared, which tells us that 4 is in S. Okay, but that means uh, 4 plus 5 equals 9 is an S, but that tells us that 3 is an element of S. Okay, so let's look what we've got so far. We know that 2 is an element of S, we know that 3 is an element of S, and we know that 4 is an element of S. So the next thing that we'll do is show that 6 is an element of S, and we'll do that by starting at this point. So uh, let's do that. So notice we can do 16 plus 5 times 4 is equal to 36. That's an element of S, but that tells us that 6 is an element of S. Good. So now what we've noticed is that 1 is not an element of S, but 2, 3, 4, and 6 are. 5 does not seem to be an element of S. Um, but then since 2, 4, 3, and 6 are, then everything, um, 
all multiples of 5 plus those numbers are also an element of s. So it looks like s is everything except for 1 and multiples of 5. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll go from there proving that. Okay, so let's look at this claim that we've written by this exploration that we did on the last board. So we have s are all natural numbers where n is not equal to 1 and 5 does not divide n. So it's everything except for 1 and multiples of 5. And so how can we uh, prove this claim that s happens to be this set? Well, the first thing is to observe that s is closed under um, the operations and I'll put these in quotes because it's not, you know, exactly the uh, perfect term for it. the operations uh, zero, sorry, one, two, and three. So I'm not going to check that. That's pretty easy to check that uh, S is closed under this uh, these operations. So notice that you can never get to one via these operations from any element in this set because one squared is equal to one. And furthermore. Um, you can never get to a multiple of 5 either under these operations. And also notice you can never get to a multiple of 5 under these operations either. So it's not too hard to convince yourselves of that and I'll let you guys write that down uh, carefully if you want to. And so uh, now all we have to show is if another set satisfies these properties then S is a subset. But that's easy because that's essentially the calculation we did on the last page. And so let's write that down formally. So let's suppose that S prime satisfies um, one, two, and three. So then S is a subset of S prime by the calculations that we did previously. So uh, there's nothing to do in that case. Uh, we just use those calculations that we did before. Okay, good. So that's the end of this video.